Hello and welcome back to Dark Dreams Don't Die. Well, we're going to just do a quick dive. I think in episode one I missed a lot because I should have gone back to the flat to get the crew log. I could have found a picture of the president. I could have looked for the clover. Hello, spinning clover. I think that there's a lot that we could have done. So maybe we need to dive more. Who is the D unidentifiable? You've got a fake guy, you've got a suspect, a mysterious girl Amanda, Olivia Jones disappeared? Or, you know, we'll just watch the previous thing. Passenger simply vanishing from an aircraft mid-flight. Does that sound possible to you? Fabulous. <laughs> now I wonder if we'd have um, got the picture of the president that things might have gone very differently for the episode there. Because we might have spoke to him before he did all that, before he kicked the guy. So this time we'll try to be a bit more vigilant with what we're doing. But we might not be able to jump back in to those visions because of the perspective. This is a story of a man. That's the doctor. strange fate. He's speaking normally though. Was David the one shot in the head? He has got the scar. I think David was shot. <laughs> Again, there's 60 different theories here. The fourth suspects. I know there's a lot more suspects than four for the Ds. Especially the ethereal Ds like death and daughter. And <laughs> Hello, Psychnosis again. That's the name of the owl now, by the way. I know it's the player's now, but I don't know. Just reminds me of Psygnosis. Still in his Albion t-shirt. I need to change his t-shirt. Wake up. You notice I do that with games anyway at times. <laughs> I'd like wiggle the controller over them. Like, get up. Alright, so there's a lot of credits we can collect. There's a lot of balloons. Lots of stuff to do. And then we got to change David as well. Let's try and give him some fabulous to go to the fabulous guy. A young little baby. You, Bubblegum in that cold weather, not hey, a great idea. Sister, I'm David Young. Who are you? I hope I press record. In case I didn't press record, I've now pressed record again. You know, just because <laughs> problems, potential. David Young, detective who investigates the past. Right, I probably missed stuff there. I should have been looking around. I mean, it'd probably be a bit too early to be doing that to me, right? Bye bye balloon. Let's free all the balloons. Some soldiers clothes? Um, that's very feminine for soldiers clothes. <laughs> Just saying. Well of course you know it was her. I mean come on. Right. Should we push her? Let's push that. 
Now what are you playing with? <laughs> Nothing. Are you really David Young? <laughs> you don't look like what I imagined. I heard you were really cool. <laughs> Why do you have a beard like that? Because <coughs> I chose it. I wonder if we turned the beard off beforehand, whether she'd still say that. She's got good composure to stay stood up on the ice after you push her. And you just teleport conveniently, telling me to go that way. Anything else out there to notice? Because we have to observe rather than just look. Just push away all the balloons. Sorry, warning sign. You know, I almost died once. It's on this very ice. I can't you believe it? The ice on the lake just started to crack. I was so scared. Like an episode of Ice Road Truckers. Oh, I keep telling you someone's going in, but no one ever does. I saw that outfit. Limited edition. Hidden behind you. Of course, still... Hints in other games. Come on, let's go! Let's play with the family of ducks! Nothing else. Nothing else. So I might be playing on these bits longer than most people would, but, you know, I want to get all of the clues. Because there might be hidden clues out here. Obviously there's credits and stuff that we can buy. David's starting to shiver. Hey, I was just about to talk to you. What do you want now? Come on, let's go! Let's play with the family of ducks! Now you're closer! Let's go. <laughs> Ducks are a bit frozen, lady. Hey. Mm. Now the question is, do I interact with the ducks or little Peggy? Frozen boys? Some frozen ducks. And now you stood up. Why didn't you come with me? Hey. Weird teleporting girl. <laughs> come on, let's go. Let's play with the family of ducks. Her voice is very familiar. I'm trying to think what she's from. Is she from Digimon? I think she's in Digimon. I see that. Don't tell me I don't see that. <laughs> there it is. Alright, so I guess we'll just sit down. There's nothing else to do. Drag and drop. Oh, great. There's half off the screen. <laughs> I hope the perspective sorted out in this issue. I mean, I know we did six episodes where it didn't, but... You're already meeting her again, though. <laughs> what does it look like? Looks like a bullet wound to your head. What do you do once you find it? I'm gonna change the past. You can't change the past. You can't change the past, David. <laughs> Little Peggy. You can't change the past. You do know that. Don't you, David? No. I can do it. I'm going to change it. 
Time is always moving into the future. It's always been that way. But... You can't change the past. You just have to accept it. I belong to the past. I'm dead, David. No! I am dead. I am dead. I'm dead. Well, <laughs> you know, I did call that before it even happened, but that's a fact, true with time travel. Although, you know, if you've gone to the past, you can change things in minor ways. But, you know, I mean, fate always wants to happen, so fate will always change to get it to happen again. So, you know, big events like that. You can't change someone dying. They will always be destined to die. So, you know, I mean, to know the future is to change the future, but also, you know, in the grand scheme of things, things will always work out the way they're meant to work out. Teddy? Teddy? Unless Teddy. you're stubborn. <laughs> it's really gotten late. This belongs to the person who jumped me on the passenger flight. Zapatero. This is a fragment of some sunglasses. A link. And that narrows it down to only one suspect. But is he really the type to use a stun gun? No, he was just kicking your ass. It's no good. The piece is unfitting, little Peggy. Well, let's see if we can find this extra little Peggy thing the doctor placed in her flat. Teddy's laptop. <coughs> Go to the kitchen and investigate the laptop. Well, I mean, it's already there. Let's get our drink on. I'll see tequila and little Peggy. Yes, here's thing. The infinite tequila. Ah, oh. uh, stamina is less than 60. <laughs> you know, it's a mystery. I've got 10 observation points, I guess. I've never noticed that before. 100% sink. Slam him. It down. <laughs> Broken? I really do wear it every day. <laughs> this isn't the four leaf clover. <laughs> I bought that watch with my first paycheck. You said you treasure it forever. For good luck. So you'll come back safely to me again, my David. I wonder if the watch is a memento. Tea party. Hang on. Tea party of very obscure <laughs> music. Canadian, I think they're Canadian. Eliminated suspects. First on the scene was Dr. August Oldman, the man who raised little Peggy. The shock was so great, it turned his hair white overnight. Wow. <laughs> That's impressive. According to his testimony, by the time he found Peggy, I wasn't there anymore. As luck would have it, someone had already taken me to the hospital and stuck me in the ICU. 
So you were already in hospital with a head injury. After recovering and returning home, I found him there. Oh, <laughs> um. Wait, what? At that moment, all I could do was stand there. He's you. But now. I mean, he had a demonic voice filter. But the eye, and he was covering his face to hide it. He, he's you in the future. You time traveled back. About David? Seems he has no memory of the night of the incident, according to his statement. The only thing he does remember are the final words of the victim. What did she say? Look for D. Dad? D? <laughs> oh God, it's another D. For David. <laughs> David is the dad of his wife. What? <laughs> Things are a bit mind-blowing. Seems <laughs> like, what? Right, let's look for this four-leaf clover. Whoosh. We're not gonna do heavy rain. It's like, woo, woo. <laughs> and no, I'm not gonna do a skit like no was doing, like, pretending to heavy rain it up. Because, I mean, you know, for two seconds it's funny, but when you do it every a lot, and especially mid rolls taking you out of the game with their skips, it's a bit strange. Kale, turmeric, egg yolk, tequila shots, you. That sounds disgusting. <laughs> See, we're heavy raining it up now. <laughs> uh, after saying I wouldn't do it, I had to demonstrate. Drink it. Drink. No, no. <laughs> So the vision is restored. Bonus to stamina and life. <coughs> There's some clothes there. We got an achievement for that. Popcorn. Mr. Popcorn. Um, we're microwaving some credits. It's very tasty apparently. Alright, so I see the clothes. Hello. I guess we can't grab the clothes from that angle. Don't do a thing. Whoosh. How do we get them clothes then? Right, let's eat the beans. Maple beans? Mm, maybe not. Right, that added a lot of stamina. Right, lager. The lager, I guess, will add to vision. But we don't really need vision. Right, let's get out the fridge. We don't want to go in the cupboard, do we? Sure, let's have a look on the cupboards <laughs> where you hide everything from Teddy. Because <laughs> Teddy can't get up there with his poor little legs. Sure, some chips or crisps, as we call them in England. Butter and lobster? That's different. Right, so let's go that. Let's walk over there because we clearly can't get it from there. <laughs> right, now we can grab it. <laughs> Crimson Dragon. We've been in the fridge. Right, let's have a quick look around the flat for this little four-leaf clover. That we may have had to have got in the past episodes and may not now the be able to Egyptians think. Were the first to draw shapes among the stars. <coughs> <coughs> so beautiful. Yeah, I think we would have had to do it timely on the last episode. Ever imagined we'd have a star spangled banner? <laughs> Looking at the stars like this makes me feel like the time has been repeating itself since long ago. You're stuck in a time loop, David. You have. 
and parted with you many times. It's such a strange feeling. Me too. Like I've met you many times. And then... I mean, I think I figured it out. He's stuck in a time loop trying to save her. And, you know, inevitably, you never succeed. So, well, you know. You probably could save her by losing her, you know, if he doesn't end up with her. If he stops the fact that he ends up together with her. If he, you know, indirectly led to her dying by being with her, then obviously not being with her. Just trim the heads. <laughs> D! Wow. Shadow clothes. Silver credits. Bronze credits. We found a D. That's a... That can't be the clover D, sure. That one... Ooh, hello. Extra. Credits. Another letter. The Clover Prince. This is from the past. David, I miss you. It's quite nice. And I still listen to the clock tick, marking the time to leave with me. Then after you visit me, leave me for work. It's the worst feeling. No, no, I'm going to be lonely for another day. Sometimes I wish you'd never come at all. Wow. <laughs> Jeez. Today's your first promotion since you joined the force, isn't it? Hope you're out right now. <coughs> Celebrating, having fun. It must be Forrest's first promotion too. Congrats to the both of you. I hope you're proud, because I am. Being able to sleep in my own bed still feels like a small victory. I've learned anything in the past two years. It's to look at everything as a gift. Even the painful things. Sickness... Again, sick girlfriend. God damn it. The sickness might be afraid to tell me to keep on living. It's a difficult gift to handle. But as long as you're in my life, I think I can win. Right now, I look forward to the both of us drinking a cold beer in the not-too-distant future, celebrating that my disease and remission for good. Love, little Peggy Oldman. 2004? Well, she lives at least another five years. Well, I mean, is that the clover memory that he added? <coughs> I don't know. Sorry, I'm getting a cough from being out on the balcony, it would seem. <coughs> Not intentional at all. Right, we don't really need any extra foods. Bandages, though. You know what? I really don't know. Oh, it's life. Right, okay. Um, I don't know if we needed any extra health. We were injuring ourselves a bit. Still working. See, it saves the progress, but I mean, we're inside the house. Do we really need to save and who are we calling? He's nodding, but the line is quiet and dead, you can hear. <laughs> hmm, what do we do here? <laughs> I do not do, David. <laughs> I don't know why I found that funny. Uh, let's look around the flat a bit. Hopefully we won't spend 50 minutes looking around the flat and chopping it into two episodes. Right, so some bandages. We don't need bandages. I don't know. I can't see my life. I hope we don't need... There's 30 bandages anyway. Um... <laughs> okay. So okay, there's no problem. No, there's no problem that a lady that you can't see is holding scissors to her arm, looking sad. Um, yeah, absolutely nothing wrong there, Dave. Is 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 it, little piggy? And jeez, come on, David. <laughs> I mean, I know you can't really do much I about a suicidal person, but touching mementos. Don't ask me how it works. 
But there's no doubt that I'm going back into the actual past.